All right, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the key bindings for the ThrottleTech Flightbox V3 or for the ThrottleTech Flightbox Mini in X-Plane 12. These are the settings that I'm using for flying the Tolis aircraft in this simulator. Let's get into it. All right, so let's take a look at the bindings now for the Flightbox V3 here in X-Plane 12. This is what I'm currently running for my bindings on the TOLUS. I saved this profile. Uh, you can see that I've saved it as A319, but I use this for the 21, the 20. doesn't matter which Airbus I'm in. It works across the board uh, for the TOLUS aircraft here in X-Plane 12. So uh, with the axes, we'll start with them. You'll see here that I have them bound up to axes uh, 2 and 3. Now, when I go full range, it goes that direction. And then when I come to idle, this is my idle spot. And then the reversers, activate idle reverse, and then full reverse. Now, this, in order for this to work properly, you need to make sure you have reverse selected on same axis in the TOLUS ISCS menu. That'll be coming up at the conclusion of the rest of these bindings. I will show you how I have that set up. Uh, along with the axes there for the thrust levers on the instinctive disconnect push buttons here, I have the autopilot auto throttle off and disarm binding. That is how you can disarm the auto thrust. Moving down from the thrust levers, I have the two engine master switches. Engine master one is bound to button three which is the binding button one, hold engine master one, switch it on. When I move it off, nothing happens. So I'm only using the binding in the on position and again that is binding called hold engine master to switch add on for this particular binding all right with the engine master switch is bound i have the start selector this is a three position three position switch when i move it to ignition and start you need to make sure you have the binding hold engine mode switch at start ignition bound uh, again that is uh the hold the switch there. When I go to off, I have button five bound as do nothing, crank, hold the engine mode switch at crank. But it's important that you have the correct bindings where it says hold because these are being used as constant on buttons here in X-Plane 12. So hold engine mode at start ignition, do nothing for the middle position, hold engines at crank for um, the crank position. All right, with that in the off position or do nothing binding, going straight back down from that, if you uh, have the full flight box V3 and you have these additional parking brake uh, and trim, we'll get to that right now. I have a yaw trim to the right. That's down here on my button 13. Now, your button numbers might be different uh, depending on how your setup is, how your calibration is, but it should be pretty darn close. The main point is that you get the actual binding correct. Uh, if I move rudder trim to the left, that is going to be the yaw trim left binding. When it springs back to neutral, there is no action. There's nothing happening. The trim reset, which is right here, I press that. I have rudder trim center. That's a good one if you're going to be practicing a single engine ops and you want to center, uh, center the rudder trim before flaring. Uh, that's a good binding to have. The parking brake, when I move it to the on position, again, this is another hold binding. Make sure you have it selected to hold park brake lever in on position. When I move it to off, nothing happens. I do not have an additional binding for the off position. So when it's on, I have hold park brake lever on. And when you release that button, I don't have any other uh, actions happening within the sim. Going to the flap lever here on the right. Uh, this is going to be an axis. You can see here flap one. Basically, it's just a straight axis. So the flap axis is just that is just an axis. So if you have a straight linear axis there, the flap lever, as you move it into position, it should correspond to the flap position in the airplane. If for some reason your flap axis isn't lining up, say you go to flaps one and you're going to flaps two in the sim, maybe play with your response curves on your flap axis a little bit if you need to. Uh, mine, though, is a straight linear, nothing special with the axis. Going over to the speed brake. This is an interesting binding in X-Plane 12, and currently within X-Plane 12, there is a limitation to which how we can bind the speed brake. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, this is not an issue. But for X-Plane 12, you have to pick what you want to do. Do you want to use your speed brake lever as an axis of the speed brake, or do you just want to use the push button to arm the speed brake? I have chose to use the speed brake as an actual lever as intended in the real aircraft. 
Now, this here, speed brakes, axis zero, works just fine. What I cannot do without using third-party software, which we're not going to cover in this video, due to the limitation being strictly in X-Plane 12, is I cannot get the push button, which you see lighting up there as button 17, to work as the speed brakes arm command. The reason for this being is if I bind button 17 to speed brake arm, when I depress the push button, the axis will be triggered. When the axis is triggered, it will automatically disarm the speed brake. This is a conflict that's happening within the sim, and at this moment in time, I have not found a way around it. There might be a way to set up a null zone on your axis at the beginning of the speed brake lever, so when you depress the button, the axis is null and void, but I have not been successful in trying to accomplish that. It's just going to be part of the... Uh, uh, part of the problem with X-Plane at this current moment in time. Um, in Microsoft, however, you can use the push button to arm the spoilers, and then you can use the axes as a separate command for arming, or not for arming, for uh, deploying the speed brakes. And last but not least, we'll take a look at the trim. So the trim operates as a momentary push button. When I move the trim wheel forward, I have it button 27, uh, which is pitch trim down and when I move it aft activate that button to pitch trim up And this is the same button regardless of which side you have the trim uh, Set up it is the same command through the software. So it doesn't matter if you move the uh, Right trim wheel if you're sitting on the right seat in your simulator versus the left seat as long as you have them bound pitch trim up pitch trim down It's going to work the way it should all right, so the last thing we're going to look at here is the ISCS menu for the reversers. You want to make sure that you have your uh, smart thrust lever idle lock on and reverse on same axis on. You do not need to have the toggle reversers. You can if you want. It doesn't really matter when you're binding this. Um, you're going to see you have your raw throttle levers or your raw data for your throttle levers being displayed here. Now, you'll see there might be a little bit of noise in the... Uh, hundredth column there or the thousandth column rather of the uh, of the axes that's not going to make an issue at all you can see the throttles are perfectly stable within the sim itself but to make sure you have your axes bound so that they correspond with the detents in the thrust quadrant you want to adjust your detent locations so these are my figures yours will probably be slightly different but the best way to do this is to set your thrust levers on your hardware at idle Make sure your idle detent is set. Move the thrust levers to the climb detent. And as you move this knob here, you're going to see it's going to move the thrust levers in the sim. You want to set it so that they are both firmly within the detent position and whatever that value may be, which for me is going to be right about there, 0.68. That's where I'm going to keep mine. You do the same thing at the flex MCT detent, and then the remaining axes will be left for toga thrust. And as you come back through the range, all everything will be uh, the same, and it will go right back to your idle detent. You can adjust your idle detent zone if need be as well. But again, you're using these in the ISCS to fine tune those detents, because as you drag these uh, little positions, they're going to move the thrust levers in the simulator, and that's going to help you make sure that your hardware detents correspond exactly with the detents in the simulator itself. So that is how my throttles are set up for the Tolis aircraft in X-Plane 12.